the second part of this practical is the separation of your product from all the stuff that you don't want. Now in the evidence sheet for this practical, it asks you to identify what the impurities are and you need to know how we deal with those impurities. Okay? So if we have a look now, okay, you can't see this brilliantly because the <coughs> plant is in the way. Um, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I haven't left it. I haven't done it for a full 15 minutes. So I haven't got a huge organic layer, but there is a layer. And I think you can see that there. Okay? So this top bit that's kind of clearer, that's our organic layer, that's what we want. And this underneath, this is our aqueous layer, and we don't want that. We want to get rid of it. Because if we measure the mass with that in it, then it's obviously going to throw off our tap. So this tap opens, and we need to be a little bit careful with this because obviously we don't want to just lose, you know, open it fully and lose all of our nice ALRK at the same time. So I'm going to be very careful. Oh, I not this perfect. There we go. Careful opening it. And run out into a big cup and there we go. Um, the aqueous layer. And that's going to leave us <coughs> That's going to leave us with uh, cyclo, not cyclo, is it much of that? It's 2 chloro 2 methyl propane. Oh, I have a gene of propane, I'm just going to speed that up a little bit. Oh, I take that, that's not working well because I've got to stop it. Oh, that one. There's the tap. Now, this happens quite a lot when students are doing it in the lab. They leave the stopper on, it doesn't empty properly, and you can't figure out why. And I've just done the exact same thing. Okay. There we go, it's going everywhere. Right. And... Stop. There we go. Lovely. Right, that's nice and clear now. Okay, I'm going to remove that. And next thing I want to do, whilst we've now got rid of the majority of our water, this product will not be completely free of impurities. Okay? <coughs> impurities that might be in there include basically just your reagents. Any unreactive reagent is an impurity. So we now need to deal with those um, impurities. So the first thing we're going to do is to add some sodium hydrogen carbonate. So uh, that's over here. We're going to add sodium hydrogen carbonate. How much does it say? Um, about 10 cc's. Sorry, I'm not well set up, am I? Because I'm missing. Okay, I've got a bunch of pipettes here. All right, this isn't ideal because it's a three milliliter of pet, so slightly dodge. I'm going to do three, three, that they're both just over three, and another just over three makes ten. You, however, should accurately measure that. Right, once you've done that, we pop the stopper back on and we give it a bit of a shake, just like we did before. And really importantly, we remove the stopper intermittently. Now what this is doing, this sodium hydrogen carbonate, is this is, oh crikey, sorry, sugar, <laughs> wrong way. Uh, what this is doing is dealing with any unreacted hydrochloric acid that might still be present. Which means that when you add a metal carbonate or a metal hydrogen carbonate to an acid, you produce a salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. So when we're opening, when we're releasing that gas, the gas we're releasing is carbon dioxide. So we're now we got rid of our water 
in the previous part, okay, we 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 use that in the separating part, we use the separating part rather to, to drain off that water. But we're now producing more water because we've done the neutralisation reaction with any of the um, unreacted hydrochloric acid. We're also producing salt, but the salt that we're producing is soluble, and so that's going to be in any water, dissolved in any water that is present here. Okay? I can't believe I've got literally half my product all over the bench. Uh, right, I'm just going to remove that stuff once more to release that carbon dioxide gas builder. And we're then going to, once more, just let it settle. And you can see, again, I really do with a cloth pick. Um, we're going to let it settle and you can see once more that we've now got two distinct layers. And that bottom layer, that's aqueous, okay? That's formed by the addition of the sodium hydrogen carbonate reacting with the acid to produce salt, water and CO2, okay? So I can use the same beaker that I did before because we don't want it, it's just waste product. This time I will remember to remove the stopper. I'm going to open the tap the right way this time. Remove that aqueous layer. And stop. And there we go. Alright, considering half of it's on the bench, we're not doing too badly so far. Okay, we then run the organic layer into a clean, dry, con bleh, conical flask. This one. Alright, so let's do that. There's our aqueous layers. I'm going to move this up slightly to allow for the longer neck. And I'm going to empty that fully. Don't need to be dainty about it this time because that's the last time that we're going to use our separating funnel. Okay, so I'm going to move that to one side. And what I've now got in here should be my halogeno alkane. But there will still be some impurities and we still need to separate those impurities. So the next thing we want is some anhydrous calcium chloride, which is over here, okay? Calcium chloride anhydrous, which means without water. You can see there it's a white, dry solid. And when we add this to the mixture, does it say how much or just a bit? Small amounts of anhydrous calcium chloride swirling after each addition until the liquid is totally clear. Just a little bit and obviously some on the desk for good measure. And I'm going to swirl in between each time I add it. Now, we have run off our aqueous layer, okay? The water, the weight, the water that we don't want, water is an impurity in this reaction. I know we think of water is, you know, a pure substance, but it is an impurity if what we want is a halogen. There may still be some in our product. And so this is the final step of getting rid of that water. Okay? I'm going to add a little bit more. And I think given the amount of product that we've got, that's probably enough. And I'm just looking that it's run clear. I'll give it another swirl. And let's see. Looks all right to me. Okay. Right. So we have now separated our product from its impurities. The next thing to do in stage three is distillation, and that purifies it further. I'm going to do that in a third and final video. So that's it for part two.